So welcome everyone to tonight's webinar entitled Resonant Fields and How Everything is Connected. I'm Dr. Trish Murray and I have been certified in four different medical specialties. I am associate professor at the University of New England College of Osteopathic Medicine. I am an author of my book entitled Make a Dent in Chronic Disease and I am founder and CEO of Discover Health Functional Medicine Center in the beautiful White Mountains of New Hampshire. And what I'd like people to think about tonight as you're listening to my amazing friend, Karen Elkins, is that we have a problem, folks. And something's wrong if 60% of baby boomers have three or more chronic diseases. And they are aging worse than their parents. They're suffering with pain, exhaustion, decreased productivity, and cognitive decline, and are fearing ending up in a nursing home and losing all of our savings. Folks, this isn't right. And, it, and the medical, the traditional medical model, which I was originally trained in, continues not to recognize the connection between our environment and our health. You may be given a diagnosis, for example, and then of course recommended certain pills or certain procedures to get. But what about the connection between food and diet and your health. What about the connection between your mind and your thoughts and your stress levels and your health? What about the connection between the cosmetics you use and the cleaners you use to clean your house and your health? And this is the types of things that I'm hoping you're gonna be listening tonight and getting a sense of. So my vision folks is for, and the reason I do these monthly webinars because I've been doing a monthly webinar now for about eight months, is my vision is for everyone to realize that you can take control of your health. And it is my absolute mission to have every baby boomer age with dignity, vitality, and grace. And I, this is why I am so excited to bring on my good friend, Karen Elkins, who has done just amazing work and so I'd like to um, take a moment and bring up Karen's, other than her beautiful image you folks are seeing, but I'm also going to bring up a little promo image here for everyone to see. And while I read out to you her background, so you just get a sense of the amazing woman that's gonna be talking tonight. So Karen Elkins has created many platforms for leading edge scientists, philosophers, inspired artists, and innovative thinkers the world over. She is the editor, researcher, and designer of Science to Sage e-magazine and has produced over 50 uh, editions. She has co-created editions for Namaste Publishing, Hay House, Shaloha Productions, and The Electric Universe. For uh, two years, she hosted a radio show on The Awakening Zone where the magazine came alive interviewing icons such as Dr. Emoto, Dr. Gerald Pollack, Dr. Rupert Sheldrake, Wall Thornhill, John Stuart Reed, Freddie Silva, and many more. Karen produced and promoted events in British, uh, I'm sorry, Vancouver, British Columbia for best-selling authors in the arena of science and consciousness. She's hosted Greg Braden, Dr. Joe Dispenza, Lynn McTaggart, Michael Bernard Beckwith for starters. For 23 years in Los Angeles, Karen had an advertising agency catering to the consumer electronics and the fashion industry. Clients included JBL, Infinity, and Harmon Cardon. Her passion for children and education inspired a five-year commitment to gifted and creative learners, co-founding Silbury Education for Gifted and Creative Learners. And for three years, she ran the Vancouver chapter of the Gifted Association hosting month events and international conferences resulting in appearances on radio, numerous radio shows, including the CBC and the Bill Good Show in Vancouver, British Columbia. She is the author of a new book that she's gonna be showing you tonight. And that's what this thing is so amazing about entitled Inside Out, A Mystical and Scientific Journey into Our Universe. And Karen just told me that she is the winner of an independent publisher's award in the science category that as far as I know, she just learned about. So I would also like to share one um, endorsement of her new book, 
before I turn it over to Karen. And this endorsement is by Greg Braden, New York Times bestselling author of The Human Design and the Divine Matrix. And this is what Greg Braden had to say about her book, Inside Out. Powerful, elegant, simple. A compelling synthesis of modern science, ancient wisdom, and timeless art melded into a revolutionary view of the universe and our lives. Where do we draw the line between science, spirituality, and nature secrets? In a visual journey of natural rhythms, cycles, and geometry, Karen Elkin's book, Inside Out, demonstrates how everything, from the very large to the very small, from the birth of the galaxies to the formation of atoms and cells, emerges from simple, connected, and unified patterns of nature. In doing so, she reminds us that the key to our healing and ultimately our survival lies in our ability to embrace ourselves in the world as living, conscious, and connected. Whether you're an artist or an engineer, a homemaker or a body worker, this book is about you, your world, and every relationship that you'll ever experience in your life. Inside Out is destined to become a cornerstone for teaching the unified science of the new millennium. And it is with my great honor to welcome my awesome friend, Karen Elkin. So Karen, I'm gonna take down this uh, image of you. Um, thank you everybody for spending the time and joining Trish and I. I met Trish at a, at a conference and we had such a good time together and um, I appreciate the opportunity to be on the show, especially since yesterday I found out I got the Silver Award for Science, which is like pretty awesome. So I'm very grateful. So here's what the cover of the book looks like, just to give you a, a clue. So the question is, how is everything in the world somewhat connected? And when we really look at it, there's only a few things that we're ever really made of. And um, I've had the pleasure, the pleasure of knowing Dr. Gerald Pollack, and he's a premier water scientist. And as he said, what creates mass, there's only three things. So I'm going to go through some really basic fundamental science pieces because they're critical to understanding how everything is connected in the universe. So just so you know, that's how we're going to go. So those three things, light, molecules, and water, are the things that literally create um, everything. And, and I will show you how. So what is matter but condensed energy? And we don't really think of it that way, but particles are particles, just expressions, dancing within their own frequency, having a particular effect. So there we go. And above all those three things that make everything, water triangulates, atoms you can see in the, in the middle picture is a picture that's never, very rarely if ever been seen, shows a triangulation of atoms. And then our light triangulates. So there is this old law of um, esoteric thinking, and this is called the law of triangles. But when you look at even uh, somebody like Tesla, three, six, and nine, add those up, and that is the matrix, which literally creates life. And the only difference between it is actually how dense it is. So it's basically nature's recycling system, one substance recycling or cycling itself in just different states. So this is where ancient wisdom and modern science really meet, liquid, solids, and gases, earth, wind, fire. So just, just to, to show you that these elements still actually have the same um, vortexing of energy um, and how they actually bring things and move their energy in space and time. And when we look at the notion of time, here we go. We look at black holes, and there's a lot of uh, stuff out there lately that they've just discovered what the black hole looks like, which is things sucking in light. And um, you can see that these forms and how it comes in is how it comes in on those V shapes, time and energy, is um, it comes just like the hourglass. As you can see that we're be basically being funneled um, like particles of sand and time. And it's one way to look at, at that pinch point is where we are, where we come in and there's, there's, there's your birth, your, your maintenance, and then there's your, your recycling back into, into death. So how does this relate and all of this relate to you? Those three elements are really what regulate your whole system. So the air, the fire, the water. Air is the spirit of who and what and how you express yourself, your tone, your whole sort of tonal matrix. 
the nervous system is is what fires and charges through your entire body it's when we live a charged life literally the things that we run through are electrical networking system which i'll explain a little bit later and water um all the new water science is basically showing us that water is holds memory and it is the living matrix. At a cellular level, you are 99.9% .9 water. At a, at a, the level that we've all been talked about is two thirds and that's the liquid that really runs through, which is the blood of our whole system. So then the question is how do we, with our own mindset, regulate all of this? So matter is always in a state, it's always in a condition and it's always in a phase. And those are the things that we're regulating in our in our system. So when when Trish and I were talking about you know being on the show, I said, oh yeah, let, let, let's talk about all the things that happen in your body because that's how we become conditioned in a particular state, you might say, and that's why disease is a disease. So we have our intuition, our inspiration, and our insights. And the reason why I put this cap in is because you can actually see that what we fire through our brains gets your brain is 90 percent water at a molecular level 90 percent not an elect, just in a general and it holds the it is the container that holds the memory and i can show you how that will be at the end so and how does the creator go ahead Trish, i hear you i was just going to ask about so how does moods and feelings and stuff like that play into this aspect of matter and these phases and conditions that we can do? well when you think of moods moods and moods are, are a state of mind and so when you're, when you're regulating like um, pulses and uh, heartbeats and everything is, and I'll show you that too later on, is in the wave. And the wave is, is, is how we spike. So if you look at something like heart math, where you're regulating the pulse, you will see how those waves are affecting you. So um, when you're excited, you're, 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 you're pulsing. Um, when you're meditating, you're calm. So all of those, elements the fire is calm the water is relaxed and the air is not like oh my god come on, my god come on, whatever all of that creates the tension the phase the condition that literally lives inside your container your body is a container and if we get patterned if you will into a positive and calm and flowing pattern of energy and emotions and feelings, that's a positive thing. But what if we get patterned into intensity or hopelessness or anxiety or things like that? People are, are by our beings, what I'm getting at is our beings can become accustomed to a certain vibrational pattern. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Everything is about patterns and everything is literally geometry in a frequency in motion. So if in, and I can show, I'll show you that visually too later, but when you, um, when you look at a vibrational plate and put sand on it and however its frequency goes, you can see literal patterns. It's new, the new science of sound called cymatics. And you can see through different shapes, the geometry that those things make. Mm -hmm. And those geometries are literally your vibe, your vibration that you're sending out, um, and the intensity of, of when your tone of what you're speaking. That actually gets stuck as a container in your body. So I know, I mean, we've all had our highs and lows in life. And when you're upset and tense, you walk around and you literally relive those, those stories. And those stories create the vibe in you. And um, that's what you're emanating out. That's what's actually coming out. That's what you're speaking. And um, I'll even show you that later on, which is really cool because then it really beckons us to be um, mindful. I love what the one thing Dr. Joe said one time is what, um, what feeling are you living? What emotion do you live by? What is the thing that runs your life? What do you wake up in the morning thinking? What do you do in the end of the day? Um, what is it that, that predominates your thoughts? And those are the frequencies that are s sitting, living in your container. Absolutely is, because any of the universal healing met modalities, whether it's Eastern, Western, whatever direction you want to go, if, if you're focused on hope and compassion and joy and positive emotions, then you're going to have a posit positive frequency. And if you're focused on again, anger or frustration or hopelessness or helplessness, then of course you're going to come from a very different frequency. And I think there's, awesome. 
Yeah, I think another way of looking at it is it's like a TV set. You are really, um, as your container, you literally are like a TV set. You've got your, your, this is your box, and you can turn your channel wherever you want and uh, what's gonna dial you in, what's gonna upset you. And so I think that's where like, when I look at somebody's work like Bruce Lipton, he's always saying, if you're in a toxic environment and you're hanging out with toxic people, that field is going to permeate you. So, you know, what you do, who you hang out with, their conversations, everything has an effect. Absolutely, and in my book, uh, Make a Dent in Chronic Disease, in chapter four, I talk about the nervous system and I talk about people's perception to the, to the events in their lives. And the idea that you do not have to feel a victim to where your frequency is. You can shift your frequency. You have the power with certain tools to be able yeah. to do that. And you're going to get into that with some heart math. I think as a speaking for myself, speak for myself, um, we've all had moments when you wonder how am I going to get out of a particular um, feeling or particular state I have. And I, and you know what, there, we all need our toolboxes and we all need something. Um, for me, it's been prayer. And, and, and sometimes it's just been having that thing sitting on the computer. You ask a question and the thing shows up. But we all need to find a toolbox and, and, and a reason. And the one thing that I did doing the book was it showed me my languaging. It showed me how I, I, I speak into the field, how I affect it, and how actually the planets even affect us. And I'll show that too. But it's, 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 it's a really um, a symphony. We're literally dancing in a sea of waves. So our own waves, other people's waves, the planet's waves. So with that, um, I think the question is, so how does all this get created? And how does the matrix work? So then the next thing I have is, how does the creator form, form you late, you? So, th th so what, when I started doing and doing the research, what you really begin to see is just like on the one side, there's the sperm and one side, like there's a pine cone, there's always that circle and seed. And what you can see is the pine cone has these nodal points of growth. The other one is a sound signature and the one is the magnetic curve. So everything is literally being burled in, seeded in, and everything is a seed idea. It's an expression of something. And how does, how does it weave you as a person? This golden thread is the same thing which people call phi. They called it the golden ratio. Um, it's part of the, the Fibonacci series. It's, it's all about the matrix that literally weaves in a flexible weave. It's not rigid, it's flexible. But this, 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 this thing called life. So you can see it here forming atoms, flowers to galaxies. Um, it's been in ancient traditions for a very long time, and you can see it here. So what flowers life, whether it's the, um, the dream catcher, which I love the symbol, because really everything that we do that we speak in is catching our dream, is catching our words and catching our thoughts. Leonardo da Vinci had, had it. it was, it's been painted. It's on every ceiling and every dome. And one way to look at it is on, the, on this, this side right over here. You can see it as an energy pack. You can see it as you as a battery, and that's exactly it. it has it emanates a field, your, your particles are moved into your field, you're created, and then you literally emanate it. And so it allows you to see how that works. The interesting point somewhere in the 70s, I believe, it was a gentleman by the name of Mandelbrot, and he talked about fractals, which you see up in the, the blue shape. But what was even more riveting to me is when I actually saw it, that this is an expression of Jesus even doing the whole as the geometer of life and the constructing. So what it says, we go back to the original thing, three things create everything. And there is the, the thing as Plato said, surfaces are composed of triangles. And then when you begin to see how that weaves by the thing where it says a periodic table, it begins to show you how it begins to knit itself and um, how life really does come from, I'm gonna call it reflections of light, particles arranged in a way that reflect light. This is where the, I love this idea where we come from the fold. You can begin to see the twisting, like the tornadoes and the water, and how these things begin to bring shape and form to life. And this is where you see that it's also not only from a plant, which unfolds like you do from a ball and then unfolds to a hand. So nature uses as little as possible of anything. And you can see how we're rooted, how like the lungs that we breathe is no different than the shape of the, the trunk of a tree to the, to the skin of a tree, to the eyes. 
Um, we are defined by our skin, our spirit, our breath, and how we are rooted and where we're rooted. And the most really cool thing about nature is it doesn't just do it this way, but it also goes back to the food you eat which is really critical. So when you have certain issues, the Chinese figured out that everything was relative. So that walnut, actually we know, works for the brain. The tomato works for the heart. And the avocado works for the wound. So nature is really amazing. Everything is relative to form and function. And just that idea that I brought up in the beginning of realizing that we are all connected is what the whole focus of tonight is about. And the idea that if we, we do not connect and nurture Mother Earth, then Mother Earth and the universe is not going to nurture us. And so it's not only tonight about our own health, but it's the health of our universe, the health of our Earth, the health of our families and our whole everything. So and and the beautiful thing about that, Trish, too, is if you look at it, it's made of the same stuff. So it, too, if, if our molecules, we're moving them um, and we're conscious, then there must be at some level Gaia, which people call Mother Earth also conscious, and are the planets conscious? I mean, I will say that everything is vibrating and sending out its frequency and its tone and its geometry communicating. And um, it's a really interesting idea. And the idea of fractals, which is the prisms, in every part of its piece is the whole. So whether you're looking at somebody's fingerprint, whether you're looking at the ear, whether you're looking at the bottom of the feet, whether you're doing hair analysis, or whether you're looking at the eyes, the universe has given us a hundred little zillion ways to know ourselves. And that is amazing. And that, you know, and that goes back to ancient Chinese medicine. It goes back to Eastern philosophies. It goes back to what we're learning. And we poo-poo so much of this stuff. But it, when you get to learn how amazing nature is, and to me, my question was, how does God create? So to me, the creator, the God in this, is just like phenomenal. So the yes. question... A lot like, of people have you know, check Karen, the idea of the humunculus. You have that there on the on and you're seeing it in the different areas you have here. The feet, particularly in the ear, you see the little man. Humunculus yeah. is the little man. Reputation representational map of the body. Um, and the idea you'll see it in reflexology of the feet and the hand, and then even in the iris of the eye. There's different uh, you know, health and wellness and medical fields that utilize these different humunculi. Uh, to diagnose things and as well as treat things. So that's amazing to just yes. see them all on one little slide here. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I think the more I did the research, the more I just kind of got in awe of um, the designer, um, the force, the creation, the God that, that creates all of this. And then, you know, everybody says, okay, so why am I here? And, and the question is, is life an illusion? So now that we know that light and life are synonymous and in every tradition it says you are the light in the world, I'm the light in the world. We're all the light in the world because we're made of prisms of light. And the thing is, we create those prisms um, and our reflection and the way we see things is all mirrored. So life is like a, a hologram. It's like this mirror of, of, of our thoughts. And um, that's why it's important for us, not anybody else, us to decide what it is that we want to see and, and where it is we want to dance and what we want to do in life. This is where you see that matter is energy and energy is light and we are all light beings. And that's Albert Einstein. And I love Walter Russell's work. He said, so-called matter is but waves of motion of light. So how could that be and how is that perception for us? So when we start looking, we can see the way we actually, every drop of water has the full octave. It's made of hydrogen and oxygen. And we are literally in a field that's aqueous, the ether, which some people will either agree with or not, but ether in itself is the same as, and they're actually spelled pretty similar, which is water, is one's a finer form or the other. In the ancient traditions, they talk about it, how you divided the firmament from the firmament, which is the waters from the waters. So when we look at how we process light, it is in the field, it is, it is light's projection, and that's how we process it, that's how we see it, that's how we create it. And it's so simple. That is the, the whole electric magnetic spectrum. So um, when we look at that, so we are like particles. Are particles like pixels? And I would say yes. And I would say, kind of you know, with a little bit of a sense of humor, we are bit players. We arrange our, our, our thoughts in our mind. Our, we weave it just like the TV set. And um, that's all part of it. So our thoughts form, those are thought forms. All thinking is creative thinking and all thinking is creative. So as you create, you create what you think. 
And that's the part where we talk about where we get fixated on and where it is that we get stuck or we get stay and we're expecting something else outside of ourselves to change it. When the only thing that can actually change it and then attract different vibration is literally us. Karen, let me interrupt a second. I'll let one person in here again. And if anyone has your is not muted, please make sure you mute yourself and please make sure you turn off your camera. But also, Karen, with this, you're, you're covering so much material, it's amazing. And I just wanted to bring up to folks the idea that with what you're talking about, with your thoughts and your form and your imagination, the idea of when we come in at a certain moment, and also the idea that we're an illusion, can you allude to the idea that we can sometimes come in with energy from our, our, our family members and things can get passed down to us from past lives or past generations and the idea that we don't, you know, we come in, but we might come in from, with stuff from past times, either down our family line or our own past lives. Well, when you look at science, what science will tell you is that we're liquid solids and gases and matter never dies. So um, from a point of view of science, you never die. So you're, you're basically, again, that recycling system that we talked about. So mm -hmm. for different people, that, that is, a, is a challenge. And for other people, it's not. So when you look at, um, I mean, it was obvious to me when I had my son that he, he, he didn't come in as an empty vessel. He came in as a, it was so clear, somebody who had been in World War II and um, every time we went to an airplane museum and he saw an airplane crash, it was like he would turn red, beat, and need to leave. And that is certainly nothing that he had experienced in this lifetime. And um, so you can see that we have predetermined gifts um, in a lifetime and a, and a story to tell and a reason to be here. So part of that light reflection that we're talking about is part of that dance of light of who and what we are. And I, I, I've come to, you know, and when you're in the wound, here's the other one, when you're in the wound, it's the soup. And so that soup of the mother and the, and the stress is um, critical. You, you need to birth something. So when a, a little container is contained in there and all of a sudden, it's sitting in stress soup. That's when I ran the school part for those five years. And I didn't see it very often. I think there should be a distinction. Kids who had ADHD were incredibly hyperactive and oftentimes quite disruptive in the classroom or, or even dangerous. Um, that was because their mother's soup inside was stressed and more. they come out already preconditioned to be on alert to create, and then they are so addicted already to having um, drama, they create it everywhere they go. Versus kids who are ADD, which can be attention deficit, but oftentimes when you're little, um, for, for, for kids, sometimes if you look at it like a computer, you have a processor. And in that processor, it may go offline because it's on overload. That doesn't make a kid attention deficit, it may need that, you know, if he's got a much more visual acuity, he may need to, um, he, may, he may need to take a moment. And a lot of kids don't have the same processing skills or speed. And that's the other thing I, I got when I was doing and looking at a lot of assessments. Um, and, it, and, it, and it really mislabels, we have mislabeled too many kids with all of those things and put too many kids on drugs um, and Ritalin and things like that because they are unable to sit or pay attention as opposed to, especially with our little guys, um, let them move and do. Uh, women are re in youth are more predisposed to being able to sit and do those things and, and guys aren't and um, little guys are for the most part. I mean, again, there's a range, but um, I actually think it's not nice. So my, my school was more hands-on and stuff like that when I did it. And we brought in experts for everything. So I did it under a homeschooling umbrella. So that's there awesome. Yeah, there's, been, there's been studies done on, on, you know, the growth of the fetus in the womb and then children that come out, let's say if the mom felt in danger or things like that, then the child may grow up at a completely different physical size than other children. And the idea they may grow up bigger for example, and the idea of being able to protect themselves. Um, and as you're alluding to ADD, ADHD, different levels of being able to uh, and have higher levels of anxiety because that's passed on. But also yeah. it's, it's from even a great-grandparent, and, and as you were saying, someone might say, well, 
this didn't come from this generation from me it's been passed down and they've done studies on that as well that belief systems hereditary oh, yeah. DNA, of course and you i know you're going to start talking about dna in a little while so i'll let you get back to that no you know it's interesting that the um what was i going to say with that one i think i, I had a senior moment <laughs> i had a moment i had a thought i was going to say about that relative to that it'll come back to me but um I, oh yeah, I know what it was. The, the first seven years, you're basically in a hypnotic state. So part of your programming, which I think is, is kind of interesting, is you're not free in a sense when you're the first seven years. You're basically downloaded with the environment that you're in. And those seven years are critical in replaying patterns until they're healed. So I think if, you, if they say that you choose your parents, whatever, that could be one thing that you could consider. You know, there are some, there's a lesson in there for you to evolve beyond. I, I can see that for myself. So that's, that's been um, very much evident. Hmm. So yeah, it's interesting. So I, I look at it this way, you know, we talked about, we showed the water and how it spins. Here's these, these, these matrices of how this um, kaleidoscope basically happens. Um, we are basically geometry, chemistry, and, and a, basically a record of light. So when we look at all the ancient traditions that talk about being the light in the world, that's where you begin to see um, the mosaics, the mandalas, and, and the kaleidoscope. The, the big image you've seen is an E8 lattice, and it is supposedly, it was um, this LEI guy <laughs> who basically showed the geometry of life in itself, and I think he got pretty close. And, and I love what this says. His body, he is bodiless, yet embodied in everything. And then you think, well, if how could that be? And when you actually see it as a structure of light, then you actually can see how that is. And again, people say, is it a particle or a wave? And I love the work of John Stuart Reed, who has a cymoscope. And he's um, shown the circle, but inside of it, and I'll show you how that divides out with your DNA and everything else. But those are spin rates, how you create one kind of flower versus another relative to the speed of it. And then when we look at our communication, our communication, if we look at how we've done everything, the binary code, the DNA code, the I Ching, the Morse code, is all languages of light. So it's a projection. And how do we project that onto the world stage? How do we share our ideas and thoughts? Um, this was the work of Don Estes and um, Randy Stack, and they created a toroidal structure which showed how the universe, and everybody's basically modeling the universe as a toroid, which is like a big donut with everything sort of circulating around. And he's shown how with words, he's got him a thing called the portico where you can actually speak your words into existence. So when we're looking to be in the field, we can see in the field how we literally speak and move things out and then create that field where people feel you in that, in that or how you feel others. So this is the power of the living word. Think of it as your words literally as a spell. So if you actually start paying attention to um, the words, they actually say a lot. I mean, your words literally are your spell. They're literally like the abracadabra. I create what I speak. And then when we speak it, this is literally how we emanate it. This is a, an image of a person, um, which is base neutral thoughts. You'll see it on one side of your screen. The middle is anger. Now, the interesting part for people like Trish and the above, you can see in the middle one, there's lots of spikes. And those spikes are relative to like knees relative to um, relationships where it's by the, the stomach, it's the gut. If it's by the head, it's like what you're thinking. And as, as we do this, this is literally the vibe that we have. People have seen Karelian photography and these are what we call shades of emotion. When I ran the school and when I was running the school, I had a kid who's a psych ed assessment I looked at and Children's Hospital had done a, hadn't done them really good. And um, I looked at it and all I kept seeing was vision issues. And I, vision, 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 vision. And, um, and they tried to get rid of his anxiety. And I looked at him and I said, do you see colors? And he goes, yeah, the yellow around you. And some people actually see people. Some people can see musical notes being played on the, on the, the, the scale. That's part of the frequency. They can actually see the color tones. But you know, this poor little guy got anxious because all the colors were jumping off the page when he was trying to read and he couldn't figure out why he wasn't like anybody else. And in the old days, that would have been called a rainbow healer. Um, the Tibetans would have thought, hey, and, and people who actually can see yours, and I'm sure many people on this 
cast can, um, it's emanating, we're emanating. So here's an interesting image when we look at the effect of us, not just with each other, but on a plant, um, my, my friend um, Krishna Madhapa does a lot of research with his GDV device, which is a gas discharge system. You can see that literally the air bubbles, the air that you're emanating and the colors. And that is a plant that's dark before it's been given love and a plant after. And then Konstantin Krotkov, who's the one who created the GDB, done a ton of research and shows images where we're actually literally projecting um, energy on into each other. And when we don't think things are literally alive, well, this is a tulip. Is that not like gorgeous? It looks like a, a little fairy dancing in it. So that is the light that it, it emanates. And I love what Buddha said, if we could see the miracle in a single flower clearly, our whole life would change. So um, maybe that's, I think goes, Trish goes back to the comment you were making. And the comment is, we need to take care of everything because everything is light. And that's what all, all ancient wisdom has said. So. Really one other thing, Karen, with yeah. your thoughts is that we have to take conscious account of, of our relation to another and the idea that, you know, what we speak and, and how we act has a, an effect on everyone and everything around us. And also what you think and what you speak, as you said, creates your own world. So if you speak again positive things or if you put it out to the universe or out to the world, something you're, you want then what's going to happen with that? It's going to create. It's going to create things that could be positive or could create things that could be negative. So it's very important for us to be conscious of the connection between our thoughts and our speak and our relationships. And that, that, that is one thing in doing the book that came really clear to me. It, it is. And, and when they say to want, you don't, don't want anything. You have to Dream, dream, think, feel it in the affirmative because then you create the field around it. So as Greg says, from what he got from the Tibetan monks and what was, was written in the Gospel of Thomas, which were Jesus' words, was no, you have to sit there and honestly sit there until you own it. And when you actually can feel it and have it and emanate it, which sometimes when you're not in the best of moods is not either. So put on the music, go take a go, you know, have your glass of wine or go, you know, go take your shower. And at the end of the day, it never hurts to take the shower to get rid of all of the energy at the end of the day of all of the other things, right? So when we look at the electric magnetic spectrum, which we're on, things that we're sharing and doing and consuming, there's the chemistry. When we look at food, this goes back, Trish, to, the, to eating. You're eating color. You're literally eating its geometry. You're, when you have flowers, you know, and, and some days you wake up and go, no, I don't want to wear that color. I really want to wear pink or I really want to wear blue. Each one, you can, you're literally wearing healing mode. And the music has different tones. Um, that's why a lot of people like their Mozart music because it's actually healing where the other stuff creates distorted, cranky sort of stuff and it's just not soothing for the body. So you actually, when you look at food chemistry, they will tell you, you know, eat this and it's good for that. You know, eat this and that's good for that. That's why you want the purple ones for antioxidants and things like that, right? Mm -hmm. So we're literally dancing in a sea of color. And since water basically consumes everything, this is just to show you water um, contains all the colors, all the chemistry. And here you can see it's it, what creates water. We go back to that very first thing, what creates life, particles, water, and light. There's your hydrogen, there's your oxygen, it's face. And so what I love about it, it's form and formless, face and faceless. Water resonates with everything, taking on the energies of everything around you, depending on its proximity, which means the people around you, the environment you're in, everything, the things you say, it literally picks up the resonance. So if you and I are sitting and having a glass of water and I pick up the glass, and you would take a drop of the Moto's kind of signature thing that we talk about where you can see the design. My design will be different than your design. So a lot of people criticize Demoto because it wasn't always reproducible for the same way for the word love or this or whatever. But my love word is going to look a little different than your love word because I'm going to resonate differently than you do. So I think part of that is learning to respect our differences and what actually what we resonate with. So this is water idea by the means of water. We give life to everything, and um, as God said, let the vaults between the waters separate. So there we go. So water is the stellar nursery of creation, 
Here's when we look at how cells divide. Um, you can see from a one drop to two to three, they begin to join, they create geometry. And this is where you can actually see where the, the old symbols of, of ancients were like the flower of life. I think drum, drummer, drumheller, drum, whatever, I'll, I can't remember his name, basically showed and, and discovered that how the cells replicate in the embryo are the same as the same way the flower of life does. And I think we have a lot in common with a monkey and a, a rat and whatever. So from a single idea that self-replicates, which is fractal, a perfect pattern emerges that flowers all of life. And we can see that with the water drop. You can see the chemistry. And there you can see the refraction of light. So again, these are, these are how light and life creates, how God creates his, his beautiful world. Then you can begin to see these patterns again. There's um, a cymatics pattern of water formulating into you know an ancient structure from before but you can see water air and part of it, they're all they're all dancing to the same sort of tune all forms of waveforms all waveforms unfold from seed records of those waveforms and you can see that that's at any point what we're creating there's you there's a bubble when you're expressing you're basically speaking out your geometry and this is how this is the the things you see on the bottom are a e i o n u those are the, um, the things and how they look when you speak. So you're literally speaking that into existence. This is Emoto's work. These are what you call, I'm gonna call these life waves. And that word that you're seeing her is, is the word thank you, fool or love and gratitude. And so this is where you can begin to see, this is the impressions that you're literally gifting and giving people when we project our light in life. But it's not just that, we consume it. So you can look in the form of tap water from around the world. This is from Dr. Emoto when he traveled when he was alive. And these are literally water that, you, that you're eating, consuming. You're consuming always information. You're always giving information and you're always consuming information. And then when we go here, we consume information in the form of light. So then you begin to take your, your the things that you eat, again, geometry, information. So, the problem I find with the science, for the most part, is it divides everything. But when you look at all of these pieces together, you begin to see that they are all one dancing frequencies of particles of light. So how does the whole universe, how does this all play in with you? So when you start looking at Venus to Mars to Earth, what you begin to see, I had this guy, um, Kung Pop, showed when he took a plate, take the universe, he put these drops and moved them. And as the plates moved, you began to see how things moved. On the one that's moving right now, that's Jupiter moving. And you can see that everything is moving, everything is vibrating. And the colored pictures you see are literally the frequencies that John Stuart Reed did for, for NASA. They wanted to know what the frequencies look like. And so these frequencies are that. These are the weaves that you see in the planet. So again, everything is, everything is creating a form and a geometry in space time. That's why um, even places like the Rosalind Chapel, which is the end of the Da Vinci Code, the Rosalind Chapel had the rose patterns at the top. It had the Venus pattern, which is part of the, the Rose of Mary. And um, I think the Templars worshipped her a bit, just a bit. And this is, again, if you see the waves that we see, we just don't generally see the cross sections. So again, there's the wave and there's the cross section. So waves of information in form, in form, you're speaking it. And the neat thing is DNA can be coded. Your song can actually be played to you. Unfortunately, Mr. Stewart Mitchell passed away this year of cancer. Um, but DNA maker has been developed since the 1970s when geneticists found it easier to read the line strands of DNA code by assigning a pitch to the 22 amino acids. Isn't that cool? Very cool. But that same pattern of the golden ratio is actually even how the planets are harmonically set up. And so you, you can begin to see that the, how we all dance and how it all dance together is the universe. So it is a universe and it has many notes and we in that little drop in our little spectrum of the stuff are like part of that note. And every one of your friends and everything that we've come across is another note. So some notes either work well for you or not. This next 
picture is the one I did for Trish because she wanted to know how the magnetic current soda works. So when we look at how the electromagnetic spectrum works, it literally creates, if you look where it says rhythm and balance, a current goes in and out, plus and minus, plus and minus. When you look at the wave picture or the, the, um, the clouds, you'll see again, left, right, left, right. When you see plants, you'll see that they, they go left, right, left, right. So literally it's a current. And when you look at it from an egg down, it again is your golden ratio. But this is a problem with a lot of the water that we drink. When we flatline it into the house, it's dead. It has no structure. So there's all, there are lots of watering devices or water devices that are actually adding structured water back in. Some ask what structure is better than another. Um, you bathe in when you're born hexag hexagonal structure, and that is actually a perfect electrical pattern. Um, for, for things. So it, and it actually, there's been a lot of research and when those sort of patterns and charge, it actually bubbles and accentuates and hydrogenates uh, the water and it helps. So like when you think of a thunderstorm, farmers like it because it brings charge. It's activated. The water is charged, activated, and it's alive. So as we get older, um, we don't have, we don't charge the cells. So one of the new things that's happening with water for health is the hydrogenated water. You can buy tablets um, for that kind of thing. So, well, Karen, Karen yeah. we all have an electromagnetic field because we are, majority of us is water. Every individual, we're predominantly water. So that idea that when, you know, you stand in someone else's space, like someone comes in and you're, they, you know, they don't have that sense of someone else's face so you, you know arm's length okay social distance kind of thing and um so what can happen to someone's electromagnetic field for example if if the health and vibrance and things like that i think you have to look about whether it's in resonance with you or not which comes into the next group of slides we have because it's um some things are in phase with you some things are out of phase you can even be in phase or out of phase with different planets at different times. I mean, that, I think we've all woken up and said, felt fabulous. And then there's some days you just feel off and you have no clue why. And you too go through a biorhythm. So let me, let me go into that because that's actually, Trish, what this next stuff is all about. So how does this all get connected? And when we look at, everybody wants to go to outer space and explore, which I think is really great. But what's really interesting is when you look at planet Earth, it has what we call the Schumann resonance. And the Schumann resonance is the resonant field of what we're actually electrically grounded to. And um, grounding and um, earthing is another thing that's incredibly healthy. We've all put our shoes on and um, buffered ourselves from the earth, but it's also like us, a magnet. And we, we exchange these positive and negative ions and it's very healing. And um, a lot of people are saying, go out and earth, get out of these big towers and our big apartments with all of these waves of um, fields of everybody's telephones and cell phones and all this stuff, which everybody's really concerned about the G5 because um, they've tested it in small places and birds have just died in masses and stuff. So um, there's a lot of uproar relative to that. So. Yeah. And many people can be sensitive to the different frequencies of what you alluded to and so much of the technology we're in. But yeah. as you say, earthing, um, there are uh, sheets you can buy, meaning you can yeah. plug it into the grounding port of, you know, you're not going to obviously put it in the electrical socket, but, but below the grounding hole of, your, of the three socket, you would put it in the grounding and you can plug it into the sheet literally on your bed. You can buy a sheet that has that will cause you to earth yourself while sleeping. You right. can go outside and walk barefoot, as you mentioned. And one of the best places to do that is along the ocean where the salt water is. Um, and so people understand why earthing would be beneficial is that we are full of, free, we create many free radicals in our body and the free radicals are positively charged. And when you earth and the earth is hit by lightning, it's full of electrons, which are negatively charged. And so when you earth and you either walk or lay on the earth or walk on the earth, you absorb these electrons into your feet and then up through your body. And then they can neutralize many of the free radicals that cause toxicity. So that's yeah. amazing. 
it, it is. I mean, we, we, we're, 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 we're actually attracted and be, and, and, and our hearts and our minds are um, in sync with the Schumann residents. So they found a lot of issues when they started the space program and they actually had to put the Schumann residents into the space program, into the capsules, because people were coming back just really goofy and disoriented. Mm. So, and again, this just shows the idea of us being like a battery. Every drop of water is a battery, you're a battery, Jupiter's a battery, so this is Jupiter. Um, everything has a magnetic top and a pole. And then so we're all dancing, we're all the same thing in a sense. And then we are molecules of exchange. If you look at it strictly as molecules dancing, the sun dances with us, the red and the, the green are two cells literally actually dancing with each other. Um, this is a guy named Thornton Streeter where he's done uh, this biofield. And then if you look at it just as the nature of particles moving, you can see how that magnetic flux and that exchange happens. But that just doesn't just happen. You can see it just happens at a, with molecules. But when we look at the balance and rhythm, the moon, the sun, and us in the galactic field all have their own. We have moon cycles. Everybody's familiar with sunspots and sun cycles, but we also go through a galactic cycle. And right now we're actually almost at the middle of the equator. And that is part of what's creating some of the climate change. And the reason I put the charts on, you see the blue and the green and the red, that's over thousands and thousands of years. You're gonna see that we're all gonna dance literally in a wave. So we're all connected and here's our own waves. So when we start looking at um, Trish, at the way we go back and regulate, and even think about how they monitor, they 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 do your think of the air, the pulse, and your pressure, the brain waves, the heart rhythms, the heart, you know. And when you start looking at coherent states and incoherent states, you can see what you're doing inside your box and inside your container, and how it how it, the conditions can either be in sync or out of sync or agitate you. And what's really interesting, and I know you can speak to this, is the electropezio effect. And that is when we literally get shocked. Our peak moments literally get fused to our bone. And that's, that's science. So when people aren't saying that you're a part of an electromagnetic wave thing, that's all we are. And so when we start looking at how we sense and have our life, all your senses are electric. So part of it is what are we thinking? Everything that we're doing is, and it's an antenna. So when we talk about the sixth sense and all of those other things, the question is how wide is your bandwidth? That's the only question. Absolutely. And a lot of people call that woo woo, but you know, a lot of people get that that antenna and that's even Tesla said. I mean, he got his stuff from someplace else and he was very clear about that. He was a genius, but he got literally his downloads. And absolutely, you know, we come in, as you've said, to this, as when we're born, and we already have certain programming, if you will, and certain gifts that we may have come in with, and whether it be we're able to hear, or whether we'll be able to touch with kinesthetics, or whether we'll be able to smell or something, again, what, how, what you're mentioning with the idea of the antenna, you know, like a radio station, if you plug into that station, that's what you're going to hear. But if you change to another station, you can change to another station. And, and what I would like to emphasize now is that every single one of us has the ability to identify our gifts and enhance our gifts. And you don't want to, you don't have to, nor do you want to, if you will, stay in one frame of reference or one little box. You want to open the box and expand your antenna because then it's going to help you be able to find other options if you're not happy with the option you're in and take control of either your health or the direction of your life or the direction of relationships you're in. That's true. And the most powerful one of all is the heart. So when we start looking at what um, the way of the heart, the heart is 5,000 times more powerful, creates that much more of a field than the brain. So the way is always in the heart. So if you're really looking to change, and I think that's why if you sit and you really own it within the very core of your being, um, and I think that's why our, our, the first thing that starts to beat is the heart. So the heart is, is really, I love this, there is no other than the house of God. This is the gate. 
heaven. And I love when they look at this um, Jacob's ladder. How are we going up and down the scale of life? How are we, how are we, how are we, are we living a good life? Or are we being good to people? Are we being good to ourselves? And in that book, Dying to Be Me, which is that Anita lady, she said, I got sick. And when I, when I died, I didn't realize I had died or I had cancer because I didn't love myself. I was always so critical of myself. I was never enough. And she said, now I had to die to be me. I had to literally die to find the love in myself and to start really appreciating that. And part of that is learning not to, you know, to have your boundaries with certain things that are not healthy for you and uh, really learn, learn to take care of you. I think that goes back to the very beginning of our conversation, but it's not, it's, it's who you're with, what you do. And um, the next one is this, I mean, we are, the brain is literally wired for survival, stimulus response, gates open and closed, wired to connect, storage and retrieval, a binary system and automated. So, so I love what Walter Russell says, sensations arise from electrical motion, which is purely automatic. So until we actually understand and stop and go, why am I having that reaction? Why am I either replaying, reacting, to everything and these are where we get caught as little people in in a, in, a, in a cage trapped thinking that we're adults but at the same time we haven't either um evolved a certain wound which is you know and and hurt that we need to get out of a certain thing and oftentimes we think we're adults but we're really acting out our childhood wounds and so when i look at that the reason i put the things at the top you can see how those resonant fields some things are either in frequency with you or actually they're creating distorted waves so the one way we can think about it, just even from a scientific point of view, is we bond like atoms, we cluster into groups like particles, we arrange by sympathetic frequencies, and we evolve our relationships by chemistry. And when somebody told me what love was, it was a sympathetic vibration. That's what you're looking for, somebody who has those vibrational frequencies. That's what you do. So from that, um, I think we can basically start asking questions just so people know, yep, the book's available on insideout.com. Um, I'm printing. It'll be ready in a couple weeks. If you want to order, go ahead. That gives you, the book is just um, 300 pages. It'll take you through all kinds of things. I've touched on it here. And what I do, I do a, a magazine. And my magazine, I've done now up to 58 of them. And they take every single one of these topics and go in, into depth with all of the best in the world and their research and their studies. And some of them aren't the best. Some of them I just love. They're just innovative thinkers. And I look where, where all the synthesis of knowledge comes in. And um, with that, Trish, thank you. I appreciate it. There's the exploration. And I will stop sharing. And then we will, we will, we will, we can all ask questions and share together. I've got to find out how to get to stop sharing mode. <laughs> ah, well, Unbelievable, Karen. Just amazing. I will thank you so much for sharing uh, everything you have tonight. I yeah. just, again, I just hope everyone is blown away as I am in the idea that, you know, our universe, our environment creates our world. And, and you have control to make shifts in it. Um, sometimes certain things do cause us to have certain um, things happen in our world, of course, that we don't have control of. But there's so many things in our world that we do. And the thing is, you can, if you're not sure, if, you, if you're feeling like you're not sure how to make shifts in what Karen has talked about tonight, then reach out. Reach out to a, a provider, a therapist, or someone, because there's so many different folks out there that may be of assistance to you. So at this point, let's open it up to some questions. Mm. So if folks have a question, go ahead and uh, type it into the uh, chat box. I've been watching the chat box, but you've been blowing people away with your information, <laughs> it, it, as you do every time I talk with you. Um, and so I haven't seen too many questions come across while uh, you've been presenting. But if folks have a question or a comment, be, be sure to either type it in the um, chat box or also if you would like to unmute yourself, uh, you know, and, and come out with a question, that's fine as well. Well, yeah, you know what, for me, Trish, the thing that was interesting was um, doing the book is when I realized I couldn't blame anybody else. I, I you know, you're, you're, you're put into a situation yeah. probably in my mind where you're left off. And um, that doesn't always, sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's not kind. 
And at the same time, how do we rise in that? And I will honestly tell you, you know, my girlfriend Sal up there who hasn't shown, turned off her video. <laughs> <laughs> she's been a friend forever and um and she's caught me being naughty saying hey snap out of it you know and sometimes you just need a buddy to just say hey you know clean up your act a little bit and and it it, it makes it forces you whether it's music whether it's whatever whatever it is that it takes for you to help switch um you know that the only one at the end of the day is you yeah someone asked they say i, I was curious how this relates to health how do you choose a healthy resonance? Well, I'm going to ask him a question back. What makes you happy? Are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Are you fulfilling your, your goals? Are you, um, you know, it's an interesting thing. I, I won't say that I, I've been terribly supported along this way in the sense that most people think I've been a little crazy being possessed <laughs> by doing this. Um, <laughs> But I, I, I have never given up what's in my heart. And actually, I'll have to tell you, it is a, a little bit of a, just getting an award is, a, is, a, is, a, is, is, a, is something that I can say, woohoo, somebody recognized it, right? And I love what I've done. And it is not what I've done. It is an amalgamation of many, many people's work. And I've been gifted to put together via the magazine or I'll be honest, I, I, the book was, I was woken up at four o'clock in the morning by a voice from somewhere that said, get out of bed, I've got a book for you to do. And I have stayed the path through hell and high water um, to do it. And I'm not an author, I'm dyslexic. And so that's why it is an intensely visual picture book. I would say that, first of all, by what you talked about within Antenna, in order to choose a healthy resonance, it's not, it's, it's a choice, number one. But for example, you've expanded your antenna, Karen, and you heard that voice and you followed that voice. And, it, it, and so you've made choices to do that. And, it, and also what you've been talking about, what I would hope people walk away with is the idea that everything has energy. The food you eat, do you choose healthy, colorful rainbow food that is not processed and not destroyed, but is alive, that feeds you? That's how you choose the correct resonance. Do you choose hopefulness and compassion in a heart-filled world, or do you choose anger and frustration? That's how you choose the resonance and the health. So these are the things. Do you choose cosmetics and cleaners that have a negative resonance in chemicals and toxins in them, or do you choose co uh, consumer products out there that are clean and healthy for you? And if you don't know how to choose them, then please go to ewg.org, environmentalworkinggroup.org, ewg.org, which will help you learn how to choose products that are labeled green, meaning they're pure, they're clean, they're going to have the right energy, they're going to have the right resonance. And this is exactly what I would like people to walk away with and see the connection between the choices we make every day in our lives, in our everyday environment, and our health and our choice to be full of the right residents. And, we, and we're entitled every once in a while to have a bad day, but snap out of it. <laughs> oh, of course, we all get the right for that. Absolutely. <laughs> Including me, I've had three straight weeks of work and I need to go on vacation Saturday. <laughs> There's another question here. It says, um, oop, I just went by. Would the G5 experiment suggest that use of microwaves is not conducive to health? Oh. They even banned them in Russia. They mm -hmm. actually sterilize your food. You're eating food then with, that's been neutered. Why would you use a microwave? Absolutely. That's my, that's my answer. I don't use one because it neuters. I mean, that's, they, they actually put towels in the hospitals in it to, to disinfect everything. Mm, so you basic, you've, you've eradicated any point of eating it. And they've, they've done studies where people's white blood cell counts go down if they use microwaves all the time in comparison to people that don't. Wow. So it absolutely can affect your health. Another yeah. question, Karen, some people seem more sensitive to other people's energy. Have you seen ways to increase your sensitivity? Oh, <laughs> that's an interesting question. Yes. <laughs> and then sometimes I go, whoa, I don't know if I want that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did. A, I had a funny experience. I actually... 
I, I had gone through a divorce and I decided I'd go to a, a workshop and I did an energy healing sort of thing. And we did Tai Chi, um, a certain sort of um, Tai Chi for shamanic work, which you'd appreciate because you're a shaman. And um, by the time I left that workshop, I would walk by somebody and I knew if they had a knee problem, I, I, there was nothing that I couldn't feel. And so I know there are some people who walk around the world like that and I would just have to keep bushing it off. And you know what? So there's a point where you want to have a radar mm -hmm. and you know, when you, and, and I, and I think most of us already do, we just don't pay attention to it because we haven't been taught that, you know, oh yeah, yeah. You just, you know, you just got that from some, oh, that's really silly. I think most of us already have, we already have an antenna, just like a cat. You know, that, that has hair, it stands up. We have that. Your whole brain is structured like that. Your whole body is an electrical antenna. Just your hand, if you think about it, is the, the same golden ratio. It is literally your antenna. It is an electric magnetic thing. We are electric. So how do you, how do you become more sensitive to that? Um, I don't know. When I did that Tai Chi step, oh my, 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 my. It took me two or three weeks to just like go, whoo, thank goodness it's gone. <laughs> But I know some people already have that. Some people are called um, sliders, like the hamburger, and they can walk by an electrical machine and turn it off. They can turn street lights off. Mm. That's why even scientists who come in and do experiments, why it works one day and doesn't work another, think of everything as particles. Everything is a dance of particles, and all you're doing is picking up the field. So I, I mean, I'd say focus on it. I, somebody did, I know how to do it. Somebody had a thing I was listening to the other night and I really actually liked it. They took it and they said, take an energy ball. Imagine you have two balls in your hand energetically and then feel the buzz. I mean, for me, I can sit here and I can feel both energy of both of my hands. I've always been somewhat energy sensitive. And it says, imagine putting the ball and energy into one hand and then put it into the other hand. And he goes, there's way you can actually practice the idea of you even thinking in moving molecules. And I actually did it and went, oh, yeah, well, I like that. So when I'm actually sitting to meditate or there's something in particular, like I really wanted manifest the, I really wanted an award. <laughs> I really wanted that award. And I sat there and I sat there and I sat there until I could see myself having it. <laughs> so, um, I think we can, you know, anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. We can manifest things and, you know, the thing I would say as a healer that uses my hands every day and interacts with multiple patients all day long, we can get nervous about that and the idea of, you know, we want to be of service and we want to give heart, but we also hear a lot of the, the negative stuff from people because they're, yeah. they're suffering. Yeah. Um, but you, you, you can also, with your mind, set intention that you're not going to absorb those types of things. And you also... That you don't, you can also understand that you will not retain things you do not have an affinity for. Oh, you have yeah, okay. For things, then you will possibly keep that and resonate with it. And so it may go home with you. But if I, you don't resonate with something or have an affinity for it, then you won't. Would right. you agree with that, Karen? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I would. I would. I, I, and and I, he wants to know how to have more of it. And sometimes we, you and I are going, can I have less of it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> another, here, another different question for you is, have you explored the use of a biocharger Tesla coil for health improvement? No. Okay. Um, um, I, no, I, no I, that, that's, I didn't do the Tesla coil. I did do... Who was that guy? It was something here in Spokane where I live. And there was some two coils where I sat between them and it kind of shot the field in certain frequencies. I was not comfortable with it. Um, I have done other things uh, relative to, but not, but not the Tesla coil. Okay. In the line of the G5 question, what have you discovered with respect to cell phone usage and health? I can only give you my own experience, and there's times if I get in a field too much, my I can get irregular heartbeat. Mm. I can start skipping, and I've noticed that for myself. Mm. And other people will get skin rashes. Other people will just get agitated, like a cat with an antenna who's just, just too much stuff coming in. I mean, we have to remember we're still waves, and then we get more waves mm. and more waves. 
And then all of a sudden you've got people in high rises and then there's more waves. And if you're out in a place where there's a lot more trees and there's a lot more interference and things that can be absorbed, that's better. But we're inundated. And I think there's a lot of research happening where they've actually put like cell towers on top of schools and kids have actually died of heart attacks. Mm -hmm. And then they've actually gotten tumors. There's a, a school in San Diego where they had put a tower up and four kids died of head of tumors back to back to back. So you're, you're disturbing, your, your, your DNA is a frequency mm. and it has its pattern. And if you're constantly getting barraged by other frequencies, it rearranges and causes a different dis, disorganization. I mean, I, I, it goes back to something really simple. We're basically particles dancing of light. And every time we have frequencies, everything of these frequencies, whether it's your voice or the G5 or whatever it is, it's all dancing with you. And when you actually are mad and you're projecting on somebody else or you're loving somebody else, I mean, imagine when you're actually in love, you glow. Mm. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that's why many of us need to get away from modern world and get out in nature, go for a walk in the woods or get away from everyone for a little while and sit quiet. And that's why one of my messages many times is for everyone I believe needs to have a practice every day. It could be five minutes, but the point is to shut down and to be quiet and to turn off the phone and to walk away from the computer and to walk away from everyone you know and just sit by yourself for your own self and preferably out, you know, go sit in the woods, go sit down. Right now we still have a foot of snow on the ground, so I don't know that we're doing that right now. We do, but, but the point is you know, you, you want to have a practice where you can quiet your being and, and bring yourself into, into balance. Um, and the other so, thing you can do at the night is take a shower because it takes all the other stuff off. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it dissipates all the other electrons that are sitting around you. So it just kind of like washes the day away. Yeah. And one, oh, one other story I just wanted to share before I ask you this other question is um, when the kid, my kids were teenagers, we decided to have one night a week of no electricity. So we turned off all the electricity and we didn't use the stove and anything like that. And actually they were teenagers. They were like 14 and 16 and they absolutely loved it. They looked forward to it because number one, our relationships grew. The food we made tasted better We could because we made it together and we played and, and we figured out how to spend the time. It was just really amazing. By so candlelight. Exactly. That's what we did. <laughs> it was awesome. It sounds fun. Question here, uh, what do you think of easy water and Gerald Pollack's concept of the fourth phase of water? I love Gerald Pollack's fourth phase of water. And the reason I love it is because it explained to me, I don't have it in the slides. Um, I do have it. Let me explain. To me, it explains the place where the bubbles divide and where the different grids, because the, the easy water has a different grid layers. And those different grid layers add for, to me, the layers of where the bubbles arrange and where the fraction of light and where the geometry of life begins and ends. So I, to me, um, let me, let me, let me go grab one thing while we're doing this and let me see if I can show a picture. Okay. I, I, I am printing the book right now. And so I, it's all in, it's kind of funny. It's all in um, these sort of disoriented pages, but I think I have it right here. And I can show you where I love the easy water stuff. Um, it is this one. Because nobody wants to, it's kind of, I'm kind of gutsy, I don't care. See right here, if you look at it, you can see how particles are arranging. But that, those pictures are nothing but water. Those are all water images. And so if you can look at the layers of light, that it create, create that with Pollux, like I, there's the easy zone. So that explains how the gridded layers of light um, happen. Uh, it's, it's amazing. And the other thing, as you can see, is people don't think about it, but this is water. Water has fire. This is water, bubbles. It's very cool. So in the book, you'll see pictures of water that you will have. It's got, it's got air bubbles. It's got all kinds of stuff. But also, water is um, crystalline. And so this is inner space. There's outer space. And there's, your, there's water. 
So you would begin again to see all the self-replicating ways that nature only uses um, certain bits of information. And Pollock's work to me from that perspective explains, he doesn't explain it that way, but I've taken the liberty to do that because I can. <laughs> I mean, I, I knew this is exactly what was going to happen. People are going to be blown away with your information. And you have so many images and visuals to show the science and the sage and how the, you know, ancient wisdom, the spirituality, the modern science all connect. It just, it, I just knew this would be amazing. So thank you so much. One other question Lisa asked is, what do you think of the practice of dowsing as a way to detect geographic stress lines in our living environment? And then she says, thank you. And so many people here, Karen, have written, thank you so much for this presentation and thank you for your, uh, I, and she says she already purchased your book and look forward <laughs> to your message. So I hope everyone else does the same thing. If you're blown away like this, like I have, please go out and get Karen's book. But go ahead. What do you think of Dowsin, dear? You know what? It's funny. Even my mother used it when she was in her house to find the gas lines. I have done um, articles on where people find water. Some people are really gifted dowsers and really do it well. Um, everybody else has got a drill. The people who know how to douse do it awesome. So do I believe in it? I, I've seen it. Um, and the answer is absolutely. Um, not everybody's got the gift of it, but the ones who do, it's like, woohoo. Yeah. Yeah. And again, that gets back to what's your gift? What gift did you come into this world with? What energies can you expand on and, and therefore take you down a path that can, can cause you to have just an amazing life? I mean, your gift is being able to take these images and take art and science and imagery and explain it and put it into a simplified form that we can actually look at and just be absolutely amazed. You know, um, I did a radio show for, like you said, for those two years, and I got lots of books, and they were all great books, but the problem is you couldn't see it. And so it all sounded really nice, but until you see how you literally speak and you, and you, the effect that you have on everything and how it dances on you, because the secret says it's all about you. Just think it. But there's still a wave. You're still writing a particular cycle. You're still writing a particular thing. So it's sometimes it's a mix. So I, I think that's a, that's something we need to, to, to talk about too. It's just, it's, it's a mix. We're a dance. We're dancing. We're dancing in the universe and we, we all, we're all doing our thing in it and we're going to have highs and lows and it's how we dance through it gracefully. And some days you just need to hide in the room, <laughs> just, you know? And we, we all have a right to cause a problem. We all have a right to hide in our room, but when you feel better, come out and dance. <laughs> Because the dance and the be out here and play like this is just what makes my life and my world and my message and why I keep doing this and why I haven't taken a day off in three weeks because I just absolutely love it. So Karen, thank you so much for coming on with us and sharing your, your gift and your wisdom with all of us. You've blown me away and I'm sure you've blown everyone else away. Well, so thank I you. Thank you for, for listening and I, and I, and I um, so appreciate it. So thank you.